to me, art is not always about beauty. Uh, art can also become a reflection of the ills in our society and a way of creating public awareness about social issues. Art can also become a catalyst for producing positive social action. So with that in mind, I've been using my sculpture to address the unspeakable brutality that is happening to innocent women and children in Darfur today. Uh, the post-Holocaust outcry of never again, to me, included not only the Jewish people, but all of humanity. But sadly, once again in my lifetime, I'm witnessing genocide. This time, it's in Darfur. So in response to this tragedy, I've created this exhibition. Through my sculpture, I'm expressing a personal outrage. And my hope is that this show will raise the level of awareness and of indignation for all who view it. Uh, the installation behind me is the centerpiece for the exhibit. It's called Homage to Kevin Carter. In 1994, a photojournalist by the name of Kevin Carter took a photograph that ended up shocking the world. It was of a Sudanese famine-stricken child who was being stalked by a vulture. So I've created my interpretation of the scene, and what I've done is I've perched the vulture atop the remains of a village which has been attacked and burnt by the Janjaweed. Janjaweed actually means devil on horseback, and these attackers come both on horseback and by helicopter gunships, which I've also shown in the video. This piece is called Darfur Legacy Number no. 2, and the sculpture is one of the Darfur Legacy series. The series depicts the brutality that's being inflicted on these women in Darfur, as well as throughout much of the African continent. Uh, the sculptures depict these women as fragmented figures, and the reason that I've fractured the figures like this is the fracturing is a commentary on the physical and the psychological scars left on mankind by a culture of violence and brutality. This piece is called Hiding from Janjaweed. When a Sudanese village is attacked, the women and children run to hide in the woods while the men stay behind and try and defend the village. Children who are captured by the Janjaweed are usually burnt alive in trash cans. So again, the sculpture is called Hiding from Janjaweed and it depicts a mother keeping a watchful eye for attackers while trying to protect her son. I call this piece Masking Disfiguration. Uh, when viewing the sculpture from the front, it appears to be a woman who is wearing face paint, but it's only when the viewer moves around to the side that they become aware that the woman is actually using a painted mask to conceal her battered face. This piece is called uh, Janja Weed Rape Victim. In Darfur, as well as in a lot of Africa, a rape is used as a weapon of war. When the Janja Weed attack a village, Rape is actually part of their dehumanizing strategy. The victim is stigmatized and she'll end up being shunned for life by her society. To bring charges against these people is just about impossible. If they try and bring charges and the charges don't stick, then uh, she will usually end up being tried for adultery. So for that reason alone, most of them just keep it quiet and they just live as outsiders for the rest of their lives. This is called Child Soldier. There are actually thousands of child refugees from Darfur, some as young as only nine years old, who are being abducted and sold to warring militias as child soldiers. There are about 6,000 child soldiers in Darfur, and there are about two million children who have been affected by this conflict. For this exhibition, I partnered with the Save Darfur Coalition out of Washington, D.C. They actually sent down their Senior Director of Development, Susie Armstrong, who spoke at the opening reception. She surprised and honored me by presenting me with their first Save Darfur Hero Award. It's my hope that uh, as we bring this exhibition to other venues around the country in partnership with the Save Darfur Coalition, um, that we can raise awareness of what's happening down there. And hopefully we can uh, create an outcry that we must stop this genocide.